controversy has followed this crew around. More specifically, third base umpire and crew chief Jerry Meals looking at two straight games in which manager Phil Garner has been ejected from the contest. Each time it was Meals and this guy, Jeff Sterillo, batting with two out and nobody on. Also ejected last night for the first time all season. The usually even keeled Cirillo took big exception to the strike zone of Jerry Meals last night, and he wanted to get kicked out. He earned it last night. Prior to the ejection last night, Jeff was one for three. Let's run his hitting streak to five. Here's the nothing and one from Lima fouled away. That was certainly something that you could see coming. Jeff Cirillo got called a couple of different pitches in that last at bat. Pitches off the plate that got called. Jerry Meals has had a couple of tough days in a row. A couple of check swing calls in game two of the series. Might have cost the Brewers a win, maybe not. Last night a floating strike zone had everybody mad. And Cirillo takes a look at a call. Strike three here. Very quick one, two, three, top of the first by Jose Lima to the bottom of the first. Brewers zero, Astros coming to bat. Like no other tire store. Experience play Strohs tonight to finish out this series against the Brewers. Second baseman Greg Biggio will lead things off. Biggio has been doing an outstanding job getting on base all series and all season long at 321 to lead the Astros again. Greg Biggio to lead things off. Ricky Gutierrez is shortstop. That's in the two spot tonight. Three through five. It's Derek Bell, Jeff Bagwell, and Moise Salou. Plenty of punch there. Dave Clark will make his first start of the series in left field, batting number six. Sean Berry, Brad Osmus, and Jose Lima round out the lineup for Houston. Well, here's the defense behind Steve Woodard tonight. Matheny back behind the plate. He got last night off. Nelson Grissom and Burnett's in the outfield. On the mound, making start number 18 on his season, Steve Woodard, whose first pitch is grounded to Cirillo with third. And there's one pitch on one out for Steve Woodard tonight. And there you see the numbers on Woodrow. He's been throwing the ball very well. He got that six loss in his last inning, as we mentioned. Very good hits to innings pitch ratio. He's only walked four batters in his last seven starts, so Steve Woodard ordinarily doesn't beat himself. Particularly impressive on Woodard's line, 100 strikeouts, 19 walks. That is a strikeout to base on ball ratio of 5 to 1, slightly better than 5 to 1. Pitching coaches ideally like to see that number at three to one. So what Woodard has done in terms of control has really been outstanding. Well, three to one is very good, particularly for a guy that is a control type pitcher. Ricky Gutierrez is aboard. There's a base hit to left center. Nilsson gets to it quickly. A one out single for Gutierrez. breaking ball that time and Gutierrez who was originally penciled in the lineup hitting seventh as you mentioned injury to Bill Spires in batting practice Gutierrez up to the number of seven spot two spot and Sean Barry hitting seventh Astros have a base runner now for Derek Bell Bell's been quiet in the series, one for 12 against the Brewers over the last three nights here at the Astrodome. Good offensive line for Bell, 17 home runs, 85 runs batted in. Talking about just tremendous productivity in the middle of this order for Larry Durker. Bell lifts a fly ball into left. And two away for Woodard in the first. I had a chance to talk to David Nilsson before the ball game about this roof here at the Astrodome. He says it really is easy to pick the baseball up. Those solar panels, if you will, that's what they look like. It shows some sunlight through those panels. Two-gunner runner at first for Jeff Bagwell. 
We talked about it briefly during our first telecast here this year on Monday. The fact that there was actually natural grass here at the Astrodome for the first two years of its existence. And those panels that you saw on the roof were wide open, clear. There was no covering on them at all, no tint to them. That was done in order for the grass to grow. Well, the problem was it was virtually impossible to catch a fly ball here because of that. So the Monsanto Corporation came up with the bogus stuff, the, quote, AstroTurf. The correlation explains itself. And they covered up the panels, and you've had the Astrodome that way since about 1967. Gutierrez runs, thrown out of second base, is not in time to get him. Well, ordinarily, Steve Wood are pretty good at holding on base runners, very quick to home plate. Mike Bethini had a little bit of a problem with the transfer. Looked like Bagwell got in his way, but Gutierrez is able to beat it. A lot of times you'll see a catcher intentionally try and bump into the hitter. If that happens, then the hitter's out. Inning over. Gutierrez with his 11th stolen base of the year, and there's a strike to Bagwell, 2-1. and one. Not an easy proposition to pitch to this guy, as the Brewers have seen in the series. Bagwell is 5 for 11 in three games with a home run. things that makes him so tough to pitch to is that anything from the belt up he's going to absolutely clobber including stuff up at his chin and yeah, we saw Bagwell hit a home run a couple of nights ago and a pitch right around his chin as you mentioned his shoulders are hanging breaking ball from Bronswell Patrick only a pitch you're going to miss or at least pop up hit it pretty well 2-2 two -two from Woody misses in tight full count three balls and two strikes well, the book on Bagwell is that if you're going to pitch him in, it's got to be way away from him. You come up and into this big old right-handed hitter, and he's going to hurt you. And he doesn't have to swing at strikes to hit the ball hard. A very good bad ball hitter. Out of that Manny Sanguian mold. He's got a full count here with a runner at second. And Woodard loses him on ball four. Rare walk from Steve Woodard. That puts runners at first and second with two away. Woody didn't walk anybody his last time out there. It was earlier on the road trip at Synergy Field in Cincinnati. It wasn't one of his better starts, despite the fact that he didn't walk a batter. He went five innings and gave up four earned runs. It was a 4 nothing loser to Dennis Reyes, and that ended a six-game winning streak. Here's Moises Alou now with runners aboard and two away. Having this guy behind Jeff Bagwell makes him a much better hitter. Not that he needs any help. Jose Salou, red, red hot. He and Bagwell have been swinging the bat very well in this series. You choose your poison. You pitch to Bagwell or Alou. From the stretchers, Woody's first offering to him is fouled away. What makes it even more difficult is if you don't really concentrate and pay good attention to what's happening out there and you get stuck in a pattern, the same kind of pitch that's going to get Bagwell out, Alou is going to beat you on. Alou's the kind of guy that you need to pitch inside to. You need to be careful inside to Bagwell. Well, these guys can hit just about anything if they're looking for it. I would say Alou is probably watching very intently that at bat. To Jeff Bagwell sitting there on deck, learned something on the on deck circle in the dugout. A scouting report obvious on Steve Woodard. A lot of change ups, a lot of breaking balls, and fastballs down in the strike zone. Got a nothing in one count on Moise Salou, who's got home runs in two of the three games in the series. Drawing it out a little further, Alou has homered in four of his last six ball games. And the thing that makes Moise Salou so tough is that if you watch his batting stroke as he approaches the baseball, very much like Paul Milder, not any movement at all. A lot of guys will cock their hands a little bit, move their shoulders in in that ready position, but he is standing dead still, very quick to the baseball, does not swing at too many bad pitches. 
two strikes. Very difficult to hit like that. Every hitter has to have a trigger mechanism. Paul Milder used to cock that front knee, keep those hands, the shoulders very still. Doesn't appear to Moise Salu has anything going for him until he swings the bat. You don't see that very much. Gutierrez at second and Bagwell at first for the Astros. Bottom of the first inning, scoreless. Two away for Woodard. The one two to Alou broke it that liner into the corner and left. That'll score Gutierrez from second. And the Astros are the first to get on the board tonight. One nothing Houston. And that's what we're talking about. Very quick, short to the baseball. Moise Salou, not a bad, bad ball hitter himself. Very much like Jeff Bagwell. Not a bad pitch by Woody. That's a change up sinking down in the zone and Olu just dropped the head of the bat on it. Able to find the outfield turf. Astros not wasting any time tonight. Two outs into the bottom of the first there on the scoreboard. For Moises Olu, that is RBI number 105 this year. Here's Dave Clark now making his first start of the series. Left-handed batter, a swing and a miss. Now you see the numbers on Dave Clark, only hitting 188. He started out very, very slow. But he has heated up quite a bit as of late. Very good veteran player to have come off the bench. Give some of your regulars a day off. This is a very deep Houston Astro ball club. Harry Dirk and not afraid to play anybody. Well, as good as this Astro team has been playing of late, they've beaten the Brewers in three straight. Still a lot of guarded optimism here on the Astro side of things. Swing and a miss, strike three by Dave Clark. So one in the first for Houston. Jeremy Burnitz leads off the second. We head that way with the Astros on top of the Brewers, one zip. In there easily. Now very risky for Burnitz to take third base on that. That ball wasn't hit all that deep, but it looked like Derek Bell looking at his fingers like slipped out of my hands. You see with that Jack Tatum off tape job up the arms. That ball down on that. Trademark just a little bit. Derek Bell winds up and almost threw it away. Good aggressive base running by Burnett. Doug Manzolino in his fourth game as a third base coach for the Brewers. He and Joel Youngblood flip flop spots right after the Cincinnati series. And now it's John Jaha with a runner at third base and one away. Johnny just one for eight here in the Astrodome. He singled last night against Randy Johnson. We'll talk about the pitches that Jose Lima throws. Fastball, changeup, and a slider. A lot of sliders to the right-handers. And predominantly will go with the changeup to the lefties. Not overpowering. He gets the ball up there at about 89, 90 miles an hour. A little bit of movement. And only throws strikes, works very quick, and goes right after hitters. He doesn't mess around. Slider in the dirt, count to two and one. The knock on Lima had been in the past that he relied too much on his changeup. Being his best pitch, it was something he was throwing far too often in way too many situations. Hitters saw it coming the second time around the lineup, and that's when he got hit hard. We talked to Jim Lafayette, the Brewers' new batting coach, this afternoon before the ball game, and he says when Lima's in trouble, that's what he does. He goes with the slider and the changeup, and once in a while, he does it too often. Nothing wrong with the fastball. Fastball is still the best pitch in baseball. You got to use it, particularly when you have a very good changeup. There's Jim Lafever, his scouting reports, and all the pitchers. Idea tonight for the Brewer battles hard up the middle. That's what he was saying. You try and pull this guy, you, he's got you. So two and two on Jaha now. Marquis Grissom waiting next. And he'll fill the count three and two. Well, Jimmy Lefevre has really brought a lot of fire, a lot of intensity to the Brewers in his short two-day tenure here with the Brewers. 
He's been very active well before a lot of folks have thought about coming out to the Astrodome. He's holding early BP sessions in the cages here. That one's fouled away by Jaha. Yeah, every day he's been here, the three days that he's been in Houston, early batting practice, getting into the heads of guys like Nilsson, Jaha. Worked with Mark Newfield today. Telling the guys, get mad up there. Taste success, that's what it's all about. Still full on Jaha. Here's a 3 2 home to him, swung on and grounded wide at third. He locks on, I'll tell you. Boy, he grabs guys on the field, doesn't even matter what uniform they're wearing. He was running after Moises Alou today, calling him Moses. Yeah. Hey, Moses, Moses, let me ask you a question. He wants to get inside of everybody's head. Yeah. Jaha lines a base hit to left. That's going to score Burnett's, and the Brewers have tied it at one apiece. Fastball that was tailing down, and it looked like Jaha hurt himself on that play. Not exactly sure how he did it, but he barely made it to first base, hands on his knees. There's that sinker, tailed back over the plate. Jaha reached out and got enough of it. Didn't hit it hard, but hit it hard enough to score the Brewers' first run. Right, good job by the offense. Give up a run, get one back. There's Marquise Grisham now. So a run against Jose Lima with one away in the second and here's a guy that the Brewers desperately need heated up. Marquise just one for 11 in the series. Turned the hat trick last night against Randy Johnson three strikeouts. One and one. Well, Marquise is hitting the ball well he's hitting it very hard to right field. A couple of games in Cincinnati hit some bullets. The right field looked like he was coming out of it a little bit. So now Marquise expands his strike zone a little bit too much and pulls the ball a little bit too much. Of course, that happens to everybody. Thing is, limit the time that you're struggling. Think up the middle, as Jim Lefevre was talking about before the game. Well, being one of the few true veterans in the Brewers lineup, Grissom is a guy who you're just going to let play himself out of any funk he might play into. Being the long season that it is, you know his numbers are going to even out at the end of the year. Where a guy like Jim Lefevre is really going to benefit the Brewers collectively is with some of the younger players in particular, but certainly everybody's going to benefit to different degrees. Two and two. And you know, a lot of the things that Jim Lefevre is going to do for the remainder of this season is just talk about the thought process that you go through when you're up there at the bat. He's not going to make a whole lot of Technical changes or batting stance changes until he sees the guys a little bit. They can't just come in here and start changing hitters without seeing them. Full count to Marquis Grissom now. Three balls and two strikes. Jaha the runner at first to run in here in the Brewers second with one away. There goes Jaha and it's fouled away at the plate. A final in the National League earlier today. Tom Glavin pitches a complete game two hit shutout at San Diego as the Braves rolled five to two. Mark Langston took the loss for the Padres. San Diego beat the Braves last night. Alan Aspie, the National League's first 16 game winner. He's doing well, huh? Andy Aspie. Here's the next payoff to Grissom. It swung out and missed. Jaha was running on the play. He's going to try to get back to first. Now he's in a pickle. Bagwell running him down, and Biggio applies the tag. Strike him out, throw him out, double play for the second straight night. Brewers do get one back to tie. Middle of the second, tied one apiece. Thursdays on MSC. Tune in for a battle of the National League as the Dodgers take on the Marlins. Coming up next on MSC. Your ultimate sports connection. Sean Barry leads things off here in the second inning for the Astros. Brewers have tied it back up with one apiece. Barry hits a drive to right. It's well hit, but Burnitz has room. One pitch, one out for Steve Woodard in the second. Bottom third of the order here for the Astros. Barry, Osmus, and Lima.
Here's Brad Osmus, the catcher. Osmus has started all four games in the series now. He's one for nine against the Brewers on this trip. Former Padre, former Tiger. One and one. One of the more athletic catchers that you'll see in the game of baseball. Very quick, good running speed for a catcher. Into the corner and left. That'll rattle around. Osmus, who runs well, as Bill mentions, gets into second base easily with a one out. The catching here in Houston, they got a kid named Tony Savio who can really swing the bat. He won the game a couple of nights ago with a pinch hit single. Fastball in on his hand is not in far enough, though. Osmus has tucked it inside the line for a double. <laughs> Double number eight for Brad Osmus this year. He's in scoring position now for the pitcher, Jose Lima. It's a big old country hack. <laughs> wow. Well, you'd expect nothing else from Jose Lima. Very flamboyant. Watch his hack. He put his foot in the bucket, too. <laughs> he thinks he's Juan Gonzalez out there. <laughs> Letting it all hang out. Why not? Swing hard in case you hit it. There's a nothing and one from Woodard. Another swing and a miss. Well, we saw we saw something that uh, many people thought they wouldn't see for quite some time last night, and that was Randy Johnson coming through with a base hit, an RBI base hit at that. So you're right. Yeah. Never know. Hacks. Randy Johnson doesn't have a hack like that, though. A little bit more of a controlled swing for Randy. <laughs> Jose Lima, we understand, has the same kind of temperament at the plate as Randy Johnson. Both of them take hitting seriously, although you never really know it from looking at the swings. Neither one of them wants to go up there as a guaranteed offer. You guys have a lot of pride about what they do, even when it comes to hitting as a pitcher. Here's a one-two for Woody. Found at the plate. Now, particularly in situations like this, Lima sitting up there, guy on second base. He knows if he gets a base hit, he's getting himself a run. Pitchers can help themselves. You see the average only 143, but he's driven in a couple of runs. There's a lot of guys on base when these guys come up, huh? Good lineup, a lot of guys on. Still a ball and two strikes. Craig Vigia waiting next. Takes a look at a call, strike three. Bit more mustard on the fastball from Steve Woodard that time, and after a number of off-speed pitches, he gets him looking. Right down around the knees, Jose Lima shook his head to Terry Taylor like, "Yep, that was a strike. Make sure you give me that one too." Right on the outside corner, good pitch by Woody. Two away for the top of the order now, Craig Biggio. Kids Saturday, August 22nd, is Lay's Pick and Save Lunch Bag Night. See the Brewers take on the Padres and the first 12,000 kids, 14 and under. Receive a cool Milwaukee Brewers insulated lunch bag, compliments of Lay's potato chips and pick and save. Well, early in the ball game, we're only in the bottom of the second inning. First base is open. Two gone, runner at second. And the Brewers are going to walk Biggio intentionally. Well, the way the Brewers have been scoring runs in this series, Phil Garner wants to play this like it's late innings. Every run, very important. You know, if the Brewers were piling up six, seven runs a game in this series, it might be a different story. But who would you rather face, Craig Biggio or Ricky Gutierrez? Not much of a choice, is it? All right, you put it that way. Gutierrez singled and scored in his first at bat tonight. But regardless, Bill Garner is still very much playing the percentages. I'd rather face Gutierrez here. Yeah, but you're right. Second inning very early to put base runners on. But again, that goes all back to the inability of the Brewers to put runs on the board. Shut out last night. And a tough road trip for the offense. Yeah, no doubt about that. So far, a one and five tour through the National League Central. One and five and three shutouts. Yeah. 
2-0 to Gutierrez now. Certainly the last thing you want to do is lose Gutierrez and then have to face the Bell, Bagwell, Alou part of the order. Yeah, that kind of wipes out the plan. Load the bases for Derek Bell. That's not the idea. Runners at first and second, two away. Here's the 2 all home to Gutierrez. The runners go. Pitch is taken outside. Throw to third, not in time. Pitch was taken for a strike at the plate by Gutierrez, but the element of surprise very much working in the favor of the Astros, a double steal. Well, this Astro ball club, very aggressive, and they're aggressive in situations where ordinarily you're not going to run. Very rarely you're going to see a team run on a 2-0 pitch with two outs and a man at first and second. You hate to make the third out at third. These guys don't care. They lead the National League in stolen bases. There's two more. Grounded a shortstop. And the Brewers dodged the bullet despite the double steal in the second. Mike Matheny will lead off the third. We head that way with the Brewers and Astros. Tied one of no with a 2.63 ERA over his last three starts for the Astros. Picks up the top of the third. It'll be Matheny, Woodard, and Vina here for the Brewers. Been outstanding of late again. 2 0 over his last three starts. And the two wins, both complete games. Not particularly since the All Star break, Lehman's been throwing the ball extremely well. 3 and 1, 3.91 earned run average. The problem that Lima has is not giving up a lot of hits. He's given up about one hit every inning, which is very good, but 24 home runs he's allowed. <laughs> Matheny pops up. Bagwell giving chase now. Osmus calling for it, and the catcher puts it away for the first down here in the top of the third. MSC delivers A-League soccer action this weekend with the Minnesota Thunder. Tune in as they take on the El Paso Patriots. That's coming Saturday afternoon at 1 o'clock on MSC, your ultimate sports connection. You know where the El Paso Patriots play? Out by that missile site? Uh, it's not, well, it's not too far from the missile site, but it's uh, it's at what used to be your double-A home ballpark there in El Paso, the former uh, Dudley Field. Dudley Dome. The red and yellow fence out there with all the signs. Yeah. Boy, what a circus that place was. Well, they tore down the uh, baseball part of that facility. It's now a soccer stadium, but uh, boy, anybody who played in El Paso during the time you were there knows of its legendary status as Steve Woodard takes a swing and a miss for strike three, two away. You know what they used to do there at the Dudley Dome in El Paso? That was a double-A affiliate again of, of the Brewers, but Anytime a home team would hit a home run, the guy would go around with the hat, the helmet, and, and they'd put money in it. The fans would put money in there. Not what's a bad the, way to subsidize your income? Oh, heck no. <laughs> what's what's the biggest pull you ever saw from a home run hit there? Oh, geez. A couple hundred bucks with a big crowd out there. Depends on how big the home run was, mm -hmm. how big the crowd was. Mm -hmm. Game in and home run, you'd think you'd get a lot of money. People run out of the place. <laughs> Fernando Vina now. A ball and a strike to Vina banding with two away and the base is empty. Now the biggest pull that I ever got out of the Dudley Dome, I, I hit an inside the park home run at the Dudley Dome. Now that's something I would have paid to see. <laughs> I'd have given you 20 bucks for that one. Are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> two and one to Vina now. Yeah, he went off that center field fence. Outfielder, I think, broke his leg. Other guy fell down. <laughs> That's uh, and, and for fans wondering uh, about the moniker Dudley Dome, it's not actually a dome or was not a dome stadium. It's gone now, but it, it played like such a bandbox. You guys all refer to it as a Dudley Dome. There's ball four to Vina. Brewers have a two out base runner here in the third on Jose Lima's first base on balls tonight. Lima very animated out there, almost like a Carlos Perez type guy. Talks to himself, storms around the mound, upset with himself about walking a guy with two outs. Oh, he's going into the Fidrich act out there talking to himself. You better believe it. He saw him in batting practice each and every game of this series, yelling at guys, throwing balls all over the place. He has a lot of fun. Here's Mark Loretta now. There's a line drive into left, and it's going to drop in front of Dave Clark. 
Base hit for Loretta. Boy, that got out there so quickly. Clark just didn't have a chance to react. Well, again, Clark hasn't played a whole lot of outfield out here. They have a pretty much of a set rotation. Moise Salou normally plays left field with Richard Hidalgo in center. Harry Durker with the luxury of playing one of his bench guys out in left field tonight. Didn't pick it up very well and caught it on a short hop. One of those fastballs right down the middle. So the Brewers trying to put something together for the second straight inning. Now it's Jeff Cirillo runners at first and second two out. Cirillo with runners on base this year batting 380. That's his second highest mark in the National League. In fact when you talk about situational hitting. You see Cirillo's name all over the leaderboards. Runners on base, runners in scoring position, 3 2 count versus right handed pitchers, etc., etc., etc. Very good two strike hitter, second in the league with a batting average almost at 300, 292 with two strikes. It doesn't matter when Cirillo hits in the count, he's equally effective. Chance for the Brewers to take the lead here in the third. Good speed on the base pass with Vigna and Loretta. Cirillo's had pretty good luck against v Lima, rather, in his career. He was two for three against Lima in his first start against the Brewers this season. That, by the way, came in early May at County Stadium. Jose Lima and the Astros, a 7 to 1 winner that night, and really the only bit of success came from Jeff Cirillo. That's certainly been the case for most of the season. This is the part of the lineup that has done most of the damage for the Brewers. You really can't point your fingers at the one through three hitters in this lineup. They certainly have done their job. They've been on base quite a bit in this series. They were on base a lot in the Cincinnati series. Unfortunately, nobody else was able to drive them in. Jeff Cirillo, a good two strike hitter, second in the league. He's gotten 59 hits this year with two strikes. That's tied for the league lead with who? Craig Biggio. Here with the Houston Astros. A lot of hits with two strikes. No doubt. Jeff still battling a ball and two strikes. Jeremy Burnett's waiting on deck next. And Lima wants to take a little time. Lima has really been the beneficiary of a good staff around him. We talked about it a moment ago. Uh, Lima really had never pitched himself onto the map prior to this year. Always a lot of potential. He was rather inconsistent as a Detroit Tiger. Was inconsistent last year in his first season with the Astros, but after they put him into the rotation this year, he's been stellar. Grounded pass to diving Bill Spires into left. They're going to wave Vina to the plate. The throw home from Clark is not in time. RBI single by Jeff Cirillo, and the Brewers have taken a two to one lead. Well, now you know why Jose Lima was upset about walking Vina. He knew who, what part of the lineup he was dealing with. Loretta with a base hit, and Jeff Cirillo with his 60th hit of the year with two strikes. What's new? Jeff Cirillo continues to add on to that batting average with two strikes. Ground ball just out of the reach of Sean Berry. Close play at home play. It looked like it might have had him out. But Brad Osman is unable to hold the ball in his glove. Good slide by Fernando Vina. Everybody gets tangled up. Yep, you're safe. RBI number 53 for Cirillo this year. And the Brewers indeed have taken a one-run advantage here in the third. You gotta like the station to station offense so far tonight against Jose Lima. And now it's Burnitz. Burnitz drilled a ringing double to center and scored the first Brewer run of the night back in the second. 
Well, it's amazing to watch on a day in and day out basis the ability of those three guys at the top of the order to get on base. Consistent all year long. There's a drive into the opposite field. Clark in the corner. Just shy of the scoreboard makes the catch. Brewers do get one to go in front, however, on the Cirillo RBI single through two and a half. Two to one Brewers. John Lithgow performs the Discover Card Dialogue song. An extemporaneous piece. Provided for your dialing pleasure while you call 1 800 It Pays To and apply for your Discover Card, the card with the cashback bonus award that always <laughs> pays you back. That was a nice surprise. And that's music to everyone's ears. It Pays To Discover. To apply, call 1 800 It Pays To. Accepted where you see the Novus sign. There are people devoted to the natural beauty of wood. They know how to protect that beauty. To you, we dedicate the full line of Olympic Wood Care products, each specially formulated to fit... Well, just your typical just try and make contact swing from Jeff Bagwell. <laughs> Gonna pull something making swings oh, like that. Oh man, I don't see how he does it. One and one to Bagwell. He doesn't garner the kind of attention that Mark McGuire does in batting practice, but he puts on a show every bit as entertaining. Love watching this guy swing the bat. Well, you miss from the waist up, you could miss as high as his eyes and still get burned. Now you talk about good hitters are aggressive at the plate. Is there anybody more aggressive than Bagwell? Grounded to the right side. Vina's got him for out number two. Now every time a pitch is thrown at Jeff Bagwell, it looks like he's ready to hit. And just at the last minute, if he decides it's out of the strike zone, he stops. That's being aggressive. Well, it's Bank One Family Day, Sunday, August 23rd, as the Brewers take on the Padres, bring the whole family out to the ballpark for just $23. Receive four upper grandstand tickets, four sodas, and four hot dogs, and tickets must be purchased in advance by calling 9339000. Padres will be coming to County Stadium. We'll be going out to San Diego tonight. That one thrown over Moses Alou. Well, Lou not all that excited about it. It looked like a changeup that got out of Woody's hand a little bit wrong. Nelson's there for it, and Woodrow gets the Astros in order in the third. Done with the front third tonight from Houston. Brewers on top, two to one. Here's John Jahan now. Johnny singled home the first run of the night for the Brewers back in the second. to short right center. Alou flags it down. Two away. One of the more impressive numbers on Jose Lima this year is that he has worked in 23 of his 24 starts. Six innings or more. But you don't see that kind of consistent durability these days. And that's one of the things that Larry Durker did when he came over here last year. He told his starters he wanted them to think about pitching deeper into the ball games, take the pressure off the bullpen, and it certainly has worked. Grounded to Gutierrez, it's short, and it's a quick one, two, three, fourth for Jose Lima through three and a half at the Astrodome. Brewers on top of the Astros, two to one. Experience the chance of a lifetime at Potawatomi's Showcase for High Stakes Bingo, located just minutes from downtown Milwaukee. You could be our next $2 million winner in our new Las Vegas-style slot area, now open 24 hours. 
For details on Bingo Times... Or Dave Clark feeling glad all over. We'll lead things off here in the fourth inning. Clark, Barry, and Osmus. Clark was a strikeout victim to end the first tonight. 0 for 2 in the series. 2 and 0. and no strikes on Dave Clark now. And with Sean Berry looming on deck next. Risky proposition when you fall behind to the leadoff hitter. Berry has been red hot. And there's ball four to Clark. That's the second third walk of the night by Steve Woodard. One of them intentional. So three overall by Woody tonight. Well, and ordinarily Steve Woodard is going to beat himself giving up walks. We mentioned that in his last seven starts he only walked four guys. Very uncharacteristic of Steve Woodard. Coming up, MSC delivers boxing powerhouses on fight night at the Forum. Tune in for an all-out battle coming next Saturday night at 7.30 on MSC, your ultimate sports connection. Lead-off hitter aboard now for Sean Barry. It's rare when you find Woodard walking more than one guy in a start. He's put three on board tonight. It's only the fourth time this season that he has walked more than two batters in a start. Well, Woody went over 27 innings earlier this season without walking a batter. Two and zero to Sean Barry. Barry's done his share of damage in the series. He's four for eight, including his 0 for tonight. And his big blow came on Monday in the series opener. Three run home run in the bottom of the eighth inning off Chad Fox. And that would make the Astros a winner that night. Bill Spires, as we mentioned earlier, was a late scratch. He was hit with a batted ball during batting practice. So you had Barry as a late insertion into the lineup. You really don't miss a whole lot there when you go Barry in favor of Spires, despite the fact that there's a right-handed pitcher on the mound. That's how good Sean Barry's going. One of the good things for Steve Woodard is Sean Barry does not get the luxury of facing many right-handed pitchers. Back-to-back -back walks from Steve Woodard. Each of them come on four pitches. Talk about rare. I don't know if we've ever seen that from Woody. Back to back walks on eight consecutive pitches. Mike Matheny out there. Don Rowe wants to calm him down a little bit. Might be rushing to the plate somewhat. Well, you got the bottom of the order coming up. Osmus then the pitcher. Given that, you would not expect Brad Osmus to be laying down a bunt here. But you never know with this ball club. Larry Durker does a lot of his managing by feel, not by instinct. Really not one book on Larry Durker. And it has been suggested that if, in fact, Durker does manage by that quote book, that it may very well be a cookbook or a mystery novel. Because uh, you have a tough time figuring out exactly what book he's using sometimes. It's all worked pretty well for the Astros this year, and here is Austin. Osmus doubled and stole the base back in the second. Woodard pitched out of trouble in the second inning. He had runners at second and third with two away. Got Ricky Gutierrez to ground out to get himself out of a jam. Brewers on top of the Astros, two to one. Woodrow working out of the stretch. Here's his 0 1 to Osmus. It's punched to the right side. Jaha's got it. Woody just beats Osmus to the bag. That effectively works as a sacrifice, although it's not scored as such. Clark to third. 
And Barry to second with one away. Well, it's not a sacrifice bunt, but as you mentioned, it works just the same. It'll go down as a fielder's choice, advance the base runners. With Jose Lima at the plate. Good slider right off the end of the bat. Osmus just cues it down to Jaha. And you can see Osmus tries to get out of the way of Woody. So as not to hurt him. Here's Lima now. Strikeout victim in his first at bat tonight. He has got the swagger of a 340 hitter at the plate, doesn't he? He's got swagger no matter what he does, Jose Lima. He enjoys himself out there. Nothing wrong with that. chance that Jose Lima has is on a pitch that's in on him a little bit. He's bailing out, pulling the baseball. You see that one got a piece of him. What do you think about the uh, Kirby Puckett Ruben Sierra routine he's into up there putting the foot in the bucket as a guy who's just basically trying to make contact. Is that going to help you or hurt you as a hitter? That's going to hurt you. You got to drive right to the pitcher so that you can hit the ball over the ballpark. Going bunt here, he pushes it foul. Now he's behind nothing and two. Yeah, but you got to be careful about with a guy that takes a hack like that. We saw Jose Mercedes taking hacks like that early in the season, and just about the time he gave up on Mercedes getting a base hit, that's when he got one. Well, you swing hard in case you hit it. That's the old theory. Lima behind Woodard 0 and 2. Runners at second and third with one away. Woodard trying to preserve his one run lead, and that one misses inside. Lima didn't like that, did he? Did you see that gaze that he gave Woody? He sure did. Oh, oh, my goodness. Oh, Let's take a look at that. Watch the gaze that he gives Steve Woodard. Hey. That's a great shot there, folks. One, two pitch is chopped wide of third. Boy, gone are the days when the likes of Bob Gibson could brush you out of there and put fear into your hearts. Guy comes inside on an 0-2 changeup and he gets a nasty look. Yeah, he's trying to hit you, Jose. Put you on first base so we can face Bizio. <laughs> It remains one and two on Jose Lima. Woody will try it again from the stretch. Right down the middle, you better believe it. Have a seat, kid. Two away. Well, second time Lima has got caught looking. Swings that bat pretty aggressively until he has two strikes. Then he's a little bit particular. There it is, right on the outside corner. Tails right over the corner. Strike three. Mad at himself, not the umpire. Pretty intense fella. Here's Craig Biggio, and for the second time tonight, the Brewers will put him aboard intentionally. This will go down as the second intentional walk for Steve Woodard. Each of them have come with Biggio at the plate, and they're going to load him up with two away to face Ricky Gutierrez once again. Well, it worked last time. Gutierrez grounded out the short the last time the Brewers did that. Kind of a no-brainer for Phil Garner if you think about it. You got Ricky Gutierrez, not known for his hitting. Craig Vigio, one of the best leadoff hitters in the game. Put him on first. If you're Ricky Gutierrez in this situation, you're getting pretty mad. Twice the Brewers have walked Vigio with two away to face him. And here he is. There's a situation where the injury to Bill Spires has hurt in Houston a little bit. Not exactly sure if they would have walked Biggio with the left-handed hitting Spires coming up. 
And with Gutierrez, the right-hander up, makes it an easy decision. Bases loaded for the Astros. There's a drive into the gap. Backfire. Clark scores easily, as does Berry. Biggio will wheel around towards the plate. Throw into third is too late on Gutierrez. Ricky Gutierrez making the Brewers pay. A base clearing triple, and the Astros go on top four to two. Well, it didn't work out this time, but it was still a good decision to pitch around Craig Biggio, put him on first base, and pitch to Gutierrez. This time, the fastball up in the strike zone, and he hammered it into the gap. Good speed on the bases. Biggio able to score all the way from first base. And Gutierrez with a head first slide into third for a triple. Now, doesn't matter what the result, still a good decision by Phil Garner to walk Biggio. First triple of the year for Ricky Gutierrez. And now it's Derek Bell. Big two out, three run, three base hit for Ricky Gutierrez, and the Astros go back on top. And all those bases on balls. Those two walks to start the inning off on eight pitches. That's what did it. Five walks all together from Woodard tonight. His highest walk total of the season. It's an explosive offense here in the Astrodome. The Brewers have seen far too much of it over the past three plus nights. That's what we've been talking about for the last three nights, last three, four nights. Somebody different every night for these guys. One through nine. There's really no breathing room for a pitcher. Two and two. Gutierrez the runner at third base. Two balls and two strikes on Derek Bell. Lined into the corner and foul. We talked about a lot of the adjustments Derek Bell has made this year under hitting coach Tom McCraw. One of them using a lighter bat. Astros felt as though he was getting through the strike zone too quickly as that would indicate. And you're pulling the ball foul. You're getting in there too fast. Grounded wide to third. Still two and two. Well, you got to make adjustments as a hitter. You know, guys will get different kinds of bats throughout the season, different weights. Some guys will even go to a different make and model of a bat, depending on how you're feeling at that particular time. Depending on what kind of pitchers up there throwing. Bell actually going to a heavier bat. Misspoke. Getting through too quickly. They want to slow him up. Checks it, but he's run up anyway. Called strike three, and that'll retire the side in the fourth. Not without plenty of damage. The bases loaded, base clearing triple by Ricky Gutierrez puts the Astros up by two. Probably do that if we took a look at the schedule. Yeah. Fernando Vina aggressively offers it the first pitch. Another fly ball for Derek Bell, and another fly out. At seven in a row, retired by Jose Lima. Through four and a half, four to two Astros. Brewers, it may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form without the express written consent of the Milwaukee Brewers. Well, the Brewers looking for their first win in the Astrodome this year. Certainly the season series here this year has gone a lot differently than last year's. The Brewers won two of three here in interleague play in 1997. But this is a much improved Astro club on the field, and it's really made a difference. Well, it's amazing. One through nine in the lineup, we've seen it for pretty much the all four ball games. That somebody different every night seems to be doing the job. And tonight, big surprise, Steve Wooder with some control problems. It's hurt the Brewers tonight. We go to work on the tough part of the lineup here as we go to the bottom half of the fifth inning. It'll be Bagwell, Alou, and Clark in the bottom of the fifth for Houston. You know, I could watch.
watched that swing all season long for 162 games, and it would still amaze me. <laughs> yeah, he airs it out. Make no mistake. And an amazing thing when you look at Jeff Bagwell on the swing that he takes. He cuts down a little bit with two strikes, but not a whole lot. Doesn't strike out a whole lot for a, a big power hitter. Walks more than he strikes out. Lined into left. Bagwell's first hit of the night. Well, when he hits them, they stay hit. Not a whole lot of opportunity for Mark Loretta to react to that one. By the time he knew where it was, it was by him. Hits the ball very hard. You would expect that with a swing like that. Here's a Lou now with the leadoff hitter aboard. We were mentioning the pitching matchups in San Diego, mentioning they were tough ones. Just by virtue of the competition that the Brewer lineup is going to have to face. And you know, you think in a three game series, there's a chance, a chance, you might be able to miss Kevin Brown. Yeah. But the way the Brewers' luck is going lately, no way. Tomorrow, Scott Carl, the San Diego native, will get the nod against fellow left hander Sterling Hitchcock, the former Yankee on the mound for the Padres. And then on the doubleheader on Sunday, game one will be the newest Brewers starter, left hander Bill Pulsifer. And your possible Cy Young Award winner in the National League, Kevin Brown. In game two, the Brewers still jockeying things around. It will likely be Rafael Roque coming up from Triple-A Louisville, and he'll face Joey Hamilton of the Padres. Moise Alou knocking one right off of that shin guard. That's why he wears it. Hurts a lot less with that thing on his foot. Brewers playing here in Houston. The Astros with the second best home record in the National League at 40 and 18. Who do you think has the best record? Don't tell me San Diego. San Diego. Oh, good. But their loss today, 44 and 14. Not bad. Two balls and a strike on Moise Salou. It's it's really tough not to cheat a little bit and look to that upcoming series, but. Brewers certainly have their hands full enough here in Houston. You really can't afford to look too far ahead. Bagwell with a conservative lead from first. A little way out in front, two and two. Well, a good change up by Steve Wood at that time. Good arm motion. A little thought it was a fastball. Just never got there. Look how far in front. Back through the zone before the ball got there. And the key to that good changeup not only is location, but the arm speed. You can't slow the arm down, that tips it off to the hitter. Steve Woodard does that as well as anybody. Alou hanging out over the plate as per usual. Two balls and two strikes. Bagwell running. And Alou pops it up. Bagwell slipping on his way back to first. Vigna makes a play. Throw back to first. In time to double him up. Yeah. Oh, you saw that developing when Bagwell slipped trying to get back to the bag. It didn't look like Vigna was going to have enough time, but just as quickly as he got it in his glove, he got it out of there to double off Bagwell. Well, the fans giving the business to Wally Bell over there at first base. Not exactly sure if Bagwell looked in to see where the pitch was or where the ball was. Let's see. Very close at first base. Wally Bell rings him up. Well, that's about the first break the Brewers have received on a call all series long. Every questionable call went the way of the Astros before that one. Here's Dave Clark now with two away. Big break for the Brewers indeed. Phil Garner on the Brewer dugout bench saying it's about time. After all, I live here in the offseason. <laughs> Not only that, the Astros don't need a whole lot of help. They do just fine by themselves. So we're taking another look at it. Didn't look like Vina was going to have enough time. And he didn't. 
Bagwell was in there. Yeah, thank you very much. Hey, we'll take it. Yeah. Oh, and two on Dave Clark. A former Indian, former Cub, former Pirate. Swing and a miss, strike three. Despite the leadoff single, Woodrow gets through the side in order in the fifth. We've played five complete, four to two Houston. the chance of a lifetime at Potawatomi's Showcase for High Stakes Bingo, located just minutes from downtown Milwaukee. You could be our next two mil... Cirillo and Burnett's here against Jose Lima. Ball and a strike on Mark Loretta, who's one for two tonight, singled back in the third. Two runs on four hits, no errors for the visiting Brewers. Four runs on five hits for the Astros. Jose Lima flags down the comebacker, one away. Well, Lima puts himself in pretty good position to field up the middle. Makes him the fifth infielder out there. Good position, gets a glove out there. Takes a look at Mark Loretta to say, yeah, I got it. So one gun now for Cirillo. Some partials in the National League, and we'll have a complete look at the scoreboard a little later on. An abbreviated schedule tonight. Pittsburgh on top of Cincinnati. That one's in the eighth. Nine to six Pirates. Florida's at Los Angeles tonight. And they are just underway out west. Brian Meadows for Florida. Brian Bohannon for the Dodgers. Two and zero to Cirillo. Brewers looking for some mid-inning offense here tonight. Most of a one and five trip away from home. You don't like saying it's a must-win in the middle of a road trip, but this is as close as one as you're going to get. Well, the Brewers currently four games under 500. It's been an awful long time since the Brewers have been that far under 500. Time to start turning it around right now. Fly ball well hit to center field. It hangs up for a Lou. And they're all two away. Boy, Jeff had a cookie fastball there and he knew it. Now let's take a look at the Tires Plus trivia question. What Astro star won the National League Rookie of the Year way back in 1991? I think we got that one. Okay. We got that one well in hand. Let's try not to chomp the bit, huh? Let's try to make this fun for our viewers for once. Yeah. Quiet about it. Jeremy Bernitz a banner. Bernie doubled and scored back in the fourth. Popped out in the third. Check that. Doubled and scored in the second. About time we were locked at a softball trivia question like that. Grounded to first base for Jeff Bagwell. Hint, hint. Side goes down in order in the sixth. Miss in Lima here in the bottom of the sixth inning against Steve Woodard. Still 4 2 Houston. Baseball been very, very good to me. The Astros have been very, very good to Sean Betty this year. Four for eight in the series again with that game winning home run on Monday. Oh, wow. Heads up. That's the third time Sean Berry has chucked his bat in the series. 
And he did it in two consecutive swings in last night's game. They got a fan holding on to the lucky bat. Well, Sean Barry's going to let him keep it. Normally, a batter is going to go up there and get the gamer and give the fan another one out of the rack. On the right there looks like a heavier version of Chris Elliott. Luckily, they hit an empty seat. Beware of flying objects. Two and one on Sean Berry. Hangs on to the bat this time. Two and two. Well, last inning, I mentioned that the Brewers, four games under 500. It hasn't been a while since that's happened, all the way back to last year. That's the last time the Brewers are four games under 500. Before this road trip, the furthest the Brewers were behind 500 was way back on May 24th. Got him swinging. The Brewers were 23 and 25 on May 24th. Before this road trip. Well, our Tires Plus trivia question What Astros star won the National League Rookie of the Year award back in 1991? Partner? Mike Ivey, <laughs> Jeff Bagwell. <laughs> Jeff Bagwell had a pretty big year. Brad Osmus now hits a fly ball to center. Grissom circling under it. Well hit, but reported for at number two. You know, we're going to San Diego, and that's one of the cities that Mike Ivey actually played in. I plan on devoting a good portion of that doubleheader some of his Padre exploits on Sunday. You know what, I imagine we could find a trivia question that Mike Ivy could be the answer to. You think we could? Yeah. That would make my year, let me tell you. Two away now for Jose Lima. Lima's been a strikeout victim in each of his first two at-bats. There's some contact. He grounds it to Vina. Vina records the out on Lima, and the Brewers set the Astros down in order in the sixth. To the seventh, four to two, Houston. Well, the first two-thirds gone here at the Astrodome, and let's check some scores from the National League, our Miller Genuine Draft scoreboard. Atlanta gets a two-hit shutout, a complete game from Tom Glavin as they shut out the Padres. Easier said than done, 5 nothing. Atlanta, the final score out of Qualcomm Stadium. An abbreviated National League schedule. Only four games on the docket in the eighth inning. Pittsburgh on top of Cincinnati. And just getting underway in a little bit. Florida and Los Angeles. Brian Meadows and Brian Bohannon. Take a look at the American League a little later as David Nilsson starts us in the bottom or top right at the top of the seventh. See that lonely cheese head here in the Lone Star State? Quite a few Brewer fans in the ballpark for this series. Yeah. And a lot of notes to pass along throughout the series. Quickly, nothing and two on David Nilsson. You know who's celebrating his 69th birthday today? I do not. Dwayne F. Schneider from One Day at a Time. Okay. Pat Harrington. Mm hmm. <laughs> 69? 69. Goodness. And Don Ho turned 68 tonight. Don Ho, a year younger than Dwayne F. Schneider. Who'd have thought? Yeah. Nelson with a fly ball on his short left. Clark on the run and makes the Franklin Stubbs basket catch on his way in from left field. Well, he had the snow cone in that glove. Looked like that ball wanted to roll right out of that webbing, but able to squeeze it, make the catch. Watch the ball. There it goes. I just squeeze it in time. And Dave Clark has that Derek Bell tape job going, doesn't he? What do you suppose that is? Is that turf tape or is that just style points out there? I don't know. You see Craig Biggio, Bagwell, they got their wrist tape, but certainly not all the way up to the elbows. Those guys head first slide just like everybody else. I think that's style points. There you see Biggio. A lot of that guys that slide head first like to tape those wrists so they don't bend back when they slide in. 
grab the bag with their hands. A lot of times that tape will give you enough support so you won't sprain a wrist, but that's a little bit out of control, isn't it? <laughs> John Jaha bounces out to Biggio at second. To his right, he gets to it and gets Jaha. But Johnny's really having trouble running tonight. He is not running at all. He mentioned it back when he got his base hit his first time up. Barely made it to first base. Didn't even get halfway that time. Obviously bothered by something or other. He had that ankle problem. He's had a hamstring problem. Knees have been bothering him throughout his career. This turf is tough, particularly with guys that are bothered by injuries. Here's Grissom now. Mark, Marquise rather hitless tonight, 0 for 2. Excuse me, man. One of many reasons that the Brewers are going to be glad to get out of Houston is going to be that AstroTurf. Not even talking about the team they're playing. Yeah, pick your reason, right? You'd almost rather go and play the Yankees if it means getting on the grass. Well, I don't know. All right, all right. I don't know about the Yankees. I might have gone a little too far. Yeah. How about the Marlins? Let's go back to Florida. Nine and zero against the fish this year. Let's go back down to South Florida. Sounds good to me. Take one of those wave runners out during the afternoon. Good town. Yeah. They beat up on the Marlins. <laughs> two and two on Marquise Grissom. Speaking of Yankees, they're beating Texas. Looks like they beat Texas. Nope, seventh inning. Two to nothing. Surprise. Little comebacker for Lima. And a Sean Dunstan throw over to first base. And the Brewers go away in order in the seventh inning. The seventh inning for the Astros. Seventh inning stretch has come and gone here at the Astrodome. You talk about somebody being in a groove. How about Jose Lima? He has retired 13 in a row. Some defensive changes as we get to the bottom of the seventh. Jose Valentin takes over at shortstop for Mark Loretta. Loretta moves across the diamond to first base in place of John Jaha. Well, something obviously giving John Jaha a lot of problems, unable to run. Will Garner had him running in his first at bat. Caught in a run down and hasn't run well since. One and two to Biggio. A good change up from Steve Woodard. With Biggio way out in front. Finally able to pitch to Craig Biggio. Nobody on. Walked him intentionally his last two times up. Steve Woodard has given up the four runs on only five hits. Really uncharacteristic of Woody tonight. Five walks. Again, two of them have been intentional. But that's not the kind of control we're used to seeing from Steve Woodard. Bouncing ball back up the middle. Vini to his right. The throw to first will be late. Gets away from Mark Loretta, but Mike Matheny is right there to back him up. A leadoff infield single for Craig Biggio. Craig Biggio just trying to make contact, bounces it up the middle. He's got great speed. People forget that he used to be a catcher. Good contact on a pitch away from him. Fernando with no chance at first base. Got a moment to check some American League scores. Art Miller, genuine draft, American League scoreboard. It's abbreviated as the National League's was. Cleveland and Baltimore tied up at fours. That one's in the eighth inning at the Jake. Anaheim on top of Toronto. Sean Green with a home run for the Jays. A Noma Garcia Para home run for the Boston Red Sox. Yankees on top of Texas, 2 0. That one's in the eighth. Tampa Bay and Kansas City. The Royals on top by two. That one's in the fifth. Ricky Gutierrez will be the batter. He has been troubling tonight. 
Runner at first base to start the bottom of the seventh inning. Recall Gutierrez was the hitter due up next, not once but twice tonight. And the Brewers intentionally walked Craig Biggio. There's a ground ball for Cirillo. That should be two to Vina for one, to Loretta for two. Score the double play, five to four to three. Brewers' second double play of the night. Well, the 146 double play. And Chef Tell made a good call on that. What's up with the Chef hat? The rally hat, man. Rally hat? Trying to rally here. How about a baseball hat? It looks like a lampshade. It's a Chef's hat. <laughs> Did you watch South Park? <laughs> no, I don't. Well, this is in honor of Chef. That's a lampshade. <laughs> oh, Derek Bell one hops to short. Valentine with a low throw dug out nicely by Loretta. And despite the leadoff single, the Astros go down in order, and the rally hat's already starting to work. The very first time I drove a truck, I was I was a driver helper. At, somebody called in sick, and the dispatcher came out and asked me if I he thought I could drive the truck. I was so scared when I got out in downtown on the hills trying to work clutch. You got, I don't know how many tons behind me and trucks rolling back and it's oh takes time to, to learn, but once you get it, I mean, it's, it's like driving a car. I prefer driving my truck over my car. The future is shaping up nicely. Thanks to Mike and Lori Holasek. Wisconsin Electric customers who set their thermostat a little higher in the summer and a little lower in the winter to save energy, money, and in their own small way, the environment. What are you doing to save energy? It's easier than you think. It's coming. And this time, there's something new. Now there's a wind tunnel by Hoover that's self-propelled, so it almost works by itself. Tests show wind tunnel picks up more dirt than any other clean air upright. Hoover, and now you can get one that's self-propelled. Like self-propelled wind tunnel. How does it look? I'm not gonna lie to you. It doesn't look good. You got a broken crankshaft, a stuck valve, and a tremendous buildup of gunk. Glide! I should have used a Fram oil filter. Nothing stops more dirt and engine damaging particles better than America's number one brand of filter. I guess I'm paying for it now. Try and be strong. Fram oil filters. Pay a little more now or pay a lot later. Well, with Jose Lima having retired 13 in a row, Phil Garner decides let's mix it up a little bit and go to the bench. Brian Banks pinch hits, and on the first offering home, he singles to right. Well, Brian Banks has seen two pitches in this series. One went for a home run. The other goes for a bullet off the glove of Jeff Bagwell and into right field. How about that guy? Having a good time tonight. Another pinch hitter. Now it's Bob Hamlet. A couple of lefty swings against Jose Lima to start this top of the eighth inning. Brewers down to their last six outs tonight, trying to salvage this series here in Houston. Astros' bullpen is active. The left-hander is Mike Magnante. He got the win here the other night in extra innings. Jay Powell, the former Marlin, the right-hander up in the bullpen, in addition to the southpaw Magnante. Two and one to the hammer. Bob Hamlin with three pinch hit home runs on the season for the Brewers. One of those here ties us up. Brian Banks swinging that first pitch of the inning off of Jose Lima might have shook him up a little bit as you mentioned he retired 13 in a row hasn't pitched out of the stretch in quite some time and obviously having trouble throwing the ball over the plate way back in the third inning was the last time that Lima had to pitch out of the stretch.
Two runs on five hits for the Brewers. And there is ball four to Hamlin. Pinch hitters doing a nice job off the bench. Well, there's a Hoover pickup of the game, a comeback, a right back at Jose Lima, who feels his position pretty well. It's Mark Loretta for our Hoover pickup of the game. That was during that stretch of 13 in a row retired by Lima. Pinch hitter is now being replaced by a pinch runner. Brad Woodall will be coming out to pinch run. How valuable is pitcher Brad Woodall? He can pinch hit, he can pinch run, and of course every five days he can take the ball on the mound and pitch for you. They figure the pitcher is going to replace Bob Hanlon after the inning's over, so why not get a little bit better speed out there? Is Brad Woodall with good speed. He's used to being on the bases. One of the better hitting pitchers that the Brewers have out there. Might break up a double play. Never know. Here's Vina now. Takes strike one. Fernando tonight is 0 for 2 against Jose Lima. He walked and scored one of the two Brewer runs back in the third. As Bill mentioned, for the first time since the third inning, the Brewers have Lima in a little bit of trouble. Vina drops down the bunter to rolls foul. We went through some of Vina's numbers in our broadcast open tonight, and at the time we told you his 360 road batting average. Second highest in the National League. Got a word on John Jaha coming out of the clubhouse as well. Johnny was removed earlier because of a strained hamstring. That's the same hamstring that he pulled earlier in the season to put him on the disabled list. Not good news. No. I saw Fernando go down to talk to Doug Manzalino to make sure that he knew what the signs were. Wasn't exactly a sacrifice bunt that he put down that last pitch. Gonna go down there, make sure, make sure he's not making any mistakes. I hate to take the bat out of your. One of your best hitters, Fernando Vina, have been very consistent. Swing and a miss, strike three. That's a big strikeout for Jose Lima. Yes, it is. Now a double play can get him out of the inning, and good changeup by Lima. You don't see Fernando go down on strikes, particularly with men on base. Uh, that had good movement on it, good location down in the strike zone. That's strikeout number six on the ninth for Lima. Now it's Mark Loretta. Loretta started play tonight with a 380 batting average with runners in scoring position. That's the sixth highest mark in the league. And these are the two guys that have done a lot of damage on this road trip. There hasn't been a whole lot of damage to be done, but what damage the Brewers have been able to muster up. Been at the top of the order. You hate to beat a dead horse, but it's certainly been the case. You don't mind having these guys up. Manzalino going through signs in the third base coaching box and it's a ball and a strike on Mark Loretta. Jeff Cirillo waiting on deck. The bullpen's ready to go should Larry Durker want to go that way at any point. Both Magnante and Powell are ready. And it's one and two now on Loretta. When the Astros are giving Mark Loretta a lot of right center field and every Brewer fan knows that Loretta likes to go that way. It's one in that gap where Woodall is going to be able to score with no problem. A lot of room out there. They say Salou's shaded around toward left field. Eric Bell straight up and right. 
Banks at second and the pinch runner Woodall aboard at first. Here's a one two home to low swung on fly ball out to right. Bell on for it out from second is Biggio and Biggio scampers out there to put it away. That may have been trouble for the Astros but Biggio read it well off the bat. On the angle a lot better for the second baseman. Jeff Bagwell had to turn around and run straight back. Biggio had a better way of going. We get a better angle on it call off the big first baseman and make the catch. That's the second baseman's ball ordinarily any pop up hit behind the bag. Well two away it'll be up to Cirillo now. With men on base Cirillo started play with a 380 average. Second best batting average in the National League with runners aboard. Only Bob Abreu with the Phillies has a better batting average in that situation. You could read the lips of Jess Cirilli. He said, Let's take a look at that baseball. Put a scuff on it, might move a little bit more. Jose Lima saying, What? He likes to talk out there, doesn't he? He's fun to watch. Yeah, he is. <laughs> Very animated, having a good time. Feel out to first base. Wally Bell says no. Didn't swing it. One better, one. Better say no. Yeah. And he went. Wally Bell's got a little Craig Statler in him. You notice that? Yeah. Yeah. Slicing into the corner in right and into the seats. I think Wally Bell can swing a golf club as well as Craig Statler. If he can, he shouldn't be out here tonight. <laughs> Get him out on the links. Very good. <laughs> I think that Chef hat will fit Wally Bell. If it fits me, it'll fit Wally Bell. As I've told you on a couple of occasions, I have a very large cranium. I know you don't buy that. I don't buy that. Cirillo grounds off the fist back to Lima, and in Carlos Perez fashion, flips to first and then does the Eckersley fist pump. Look at this guy go. a ball game trailing by a pair. What are done after seven here in the bottom of the eighth inning. It's Bagwell, Alou and Clark and they'll take swings against the new right hander for the Brewers. David Weathers. Well here's our discover card payback playback. They see Ricky Gutierrez back in the fourth inning. Three walks by Steve Woodard all score on the two out triple. By the Astros shortstop, and that's been the difference tonight. Our Discover card, payback, playback. Well, Brewers decided to walk Craig Biggio two different times to face Ricky Gutierrez. Worked once, second time might have cost him the game. Still a good decision, though. Got to do that. Phil Grun would do that again. You gotta believe he would. And I agree. Well, Gutierrez was only one for five with bases loaded. You just don't want to let the team's best threat beat you in that situation. That was Biggio. This happened to be a decision that backfired. So here's David Weathers out from the bullpen now. Weathers working to Bagwell, Alou, and Clark. David Weathers has done a real fine job since coming over from the Cincinnati Reds. There you see his record between the two teams, the Reds and the Brewers, four and four. ERA just under five, but with Milwaukee, he's two and zero oh with an ERA of 1.25. Can't get much better than that. Ball and two strikes on Bagwell. 
Well, Steve Woodard gone after seven allows the four runs on six hits. Woody walked five struck out six tonight. And Bagwell is a strikeout victim to start the eighth for David Weathers. A uh, good slider by Weathers that time. That's one of those Steve Woodard types. Sure. Bagwell thinks it's a fastball inside. Breaks right back over the inside corner. Strike three looking. That's the only place you're going to beat Bagwell inside at the knees. Nice work by David Weathers. Now it's Moises Alou. A couple of former Marlins going at it here with one away and the base is empty in the bottom of the eighth. When the Brewers bat in the ninth, they'll have Bernitz, Nilsson, and Valentin. Well, this is a knee buckler right there. You see the upper body go back, the knees bend. That means you got good break on your careful. Little jelly leg. Old jelly legger, the old sidewinder, the old horn swaggler, the old bushwhacker. Still got that hat on. Well, we'll see if we can come up with a little rally here in the ninth. They were going to take that off. Maybe not. Would it bother you if I wore this on the plane to San Diego tonight? Wouldn't bother me. I imagine a lot of guys would get a kick out of it. <laughs> Three one home to Alou is in for a called strike. Alou out there talking to Terry Tate. He said, "No way that ball can break that much." Looked like Terry Tate thought that was strike three. Gave him a punch out call on that strike two. You have a chuckle about it, and this time Weathers misses well inside. There's ball four. It's not your worst fate to walk. Alou, he has been red hot in the series. Dave Clark, the banner now. <laughs> Astros on top, four to two, bottom of the eighth. The Brewers will be back here at the Astrodome in just about three weeks. Really not much good news there. And that'll be as a part of another 10 game road trip. It's tough enough to come here and play this Astro Club in the Astrodome. But when you do it as a part of an extended tour away from your home ballpark it becomes even more difficult. Yeah, two 10 game road trips in a span of a month. You're not going to see that every year. One of the things that Bud Selig talked about doing as his First year as permanent commissioner, do something about that schedule. Well, it's been a rough one this year. Two different times the Brewers have been on three city trips, spanning three time zones, and that takes its toll on them. Although it has not been made public, nor has it been made official, the 1999 schedule, a working version, has been released for the clubs to go over. Major League Baseball is in the process of finalizing that piece of the paperwork. One ball and one strike on Dave Clark. I guess one of the biggest gripes that players and coaches, for that matter, have about the schedule is all the two-game series. We have a couple of them on that next big road trip. Four cities, two in Pittsburgh, two in Houston. Back-to-back two-game series. Out of travel. Two and one. That is not just the Brewers. Every team has that problem. Yeah, the two game series is a problem for everybody. There's really nothing positive to say about it either. We're under three and one now on Dave Clark. That was Dave Clark that walked back in the fourth inning to start that big rally by the Houston Astros. A walk to Clark, a walk to Barry. And a couple of outs, an intentional walk to Biggio, then the triple. 
Three runs and only one hit. Oh, big swing and a miss there. Full count, three and two. And David Weathers down in the count, says here's the fastball. Dave Clark couldn't hit it. Right down the middle. Big payoff pitch coming up here for David Weathers before he comes home. He'll throw over the first to check on a loop. There's the payoff home with the runner going. Doesn't matter. It misses low. Boy, he didn't miss by a whole lot there. Number of questionable strike calls there, or rather non-strike calls, and David Weathers has questions himself. Well, Terry Taylor obviously thought this ball was a little bit low. Wasn't inside. That's where Dave Clark thought it was. One of those tailing fast balls started off the plate, tailed right back over, might have fooled the umpire. That's a pretty good pitch. Yeah, that's happened before. Fooling the umpire, meaning Clark scooting out of the way. Now the movement on the pitch. Uh, Thought it was off the plate, gave up on it, and tailed right back over the corner. Fooled the hitter and the ump. Well, here's Sean Barry now. He takes strike one. Now, a lot of times an umpire will tell a catcher, he'll say, I had just missed that one. Not a whole lot you can say. Well, there was a little conversation there between Mike Matheny and Terry Tata after that ball four was called. Between Bobby Hughes, rather, and Terry Tata, as Hughes has come on defensively for Matheny after he was pinch hit fool last inning. 0-2. Oh well, it doesn't change the situation, but when the umpire says, hey, look, I just missed that one, not, not a whole lot of catcher can say. What are you going to argue about? <laughs> There's nothing to argue about. <laughs> gotta take, you kind of take the whole game away from the guy, <laughs> yeah. don't you? Kind of breaks your bubble. You're all set to get in his face, and he says, hey, I made a mistake. Then what do you do? John Barry takes a look at a called strike three. I didn't miss that one. The only thing a catcher can say is, hey, don't give up on it. He's got good movement on the pitch. Take a good look at it. This time he does. Almost the same type of pitch. Didn't move as much, but right on the corner. A little bit too close to take with two strikes. So two away now for Brad Osmus. David Weathers trying to keep the Brewer deficit at two for the top of the ninth inning. And once again, once we get there, it'll be Burnitz, Nilsson, and Valentin. Three pretty good hacks to try and tie this ball game up. Runners at first and second for Houston, both of them there via the base on balls, Alou and Clark at second and first, respectively. Good block by Hughes on a pitch in the dirt. They had to go a long way to get that one. Bobby Hughes lately has had some trouble have, having balls get by him, but that was a tough chance, and he was up to it. Astros have their closer standing in the bullpen, flame throwing lefty Billy Wagner. That's fouled into the direction of the Astro bullpen. Play football at Odessa Permian. Yeah. He'd look good with that chef hat on, wouldn't he? No, he wouldn't. No? He would hit, hit fit him. Actually, he probably would. He'd look a lot better in this thing than I would. <laughs> you know what I think you ought to do? Don't take that hat off until the Brewers win. Make a stand. Make a statement. So you're saying sleep in it? Yeah. If uh, this game is a loss tonight? Yeah. That'd make showering tough. Grounded into the hole at shortstop. Valentin gets to it. Throw to third. And Cirillo can't finish. Oh, my. Now well, that'll go down as an error on Jeff Cirillo because Jerry, while he checked that, Jerry Mills rung him up. Well, he called him out. Then he called him safe once he realized that Cirillo dropped the baseball. Oh, a slider down and in. Good play by Valentin. And Cirillo tries to... Squeeze the glove a little bit too quick. Ordinarily, when an umpire rings up an, a batter or a base runner out, 
and then says safe after the ball's dropped. That's ordinarily an error, and that's exactly what they're going to give Cirillo. Cirillo charged with only his ninth error on the season. Coming into play, Cirillo had led all National League third baseman in fielding percentage. Fielding percentage of 976. And very steady at third base. Only one guy in all of Major League Baseball catching the ball any better than Jeff, and that's Cal Ripken. Yeah, fielding percentage of 981. Of course, Jeff has a lot more range than does Ripken. Jeff gets to a lot more balls. Still not bad for Cal Ripken Jr. He's been around a long time. Veteran. You bet, you bet. Still playing very well over there at Baltimore. A pinch hitter now. Veteran Pete Incavilia. Although by looking at him, you might not think so. Drive well hit to left. Nilsson back and it's off the wall. Alou wheels around his score. Here comes Osmus. Throw to the plate is in plenty of time to ring him up. Boy, Brad Osmus slid into his catching counterpart Bobby Hughes as though he was sliding into a brick wall. Score it as an RBI knock for Incavilia. The Astros get some insurance. We go to the ninth, and it's now 6-5, rather, 5-2 Houston. At this year with the Houston Astros, he hit it a ton right off the wall. That's going to score two runs. A good relay by the Brewers. Get Osmus at the plate. Talking about him running into a brick wall. Bobby Hughes didn't budge an inch. One of those bases on balls have killed Milwaukee tonight. Seven walks, five of them have scored. And yes, indeed, that makes it six. Six to Houston. I had indicated incorrectly getting out of the inning that it was a five to two score. Indeed, two runs scored on that base hit by Incavilia. So it's a four run deficit for the Brewers to work with here in the ninth. Burnett's will lead things off and a new pitcher on the mound for the Astros. He is the hardest throwing left hander in the business. Billy Wagner. Uh, Billy Wagner with 23 saves. He picked one up a couple of nights ago against the Brewers. Two and three two point seven two earned run average in his 41st game tonight. This guy can flat out bring it. Down to the second. Biggio to Bagwell run away. They're talking about a guy that can get upwards of 100 miles an hour consistently at 97 98 and a pretty good slider that he throws at about 88 miles an hour. The slider is something that has greatly improved for Billy Wagner since the arrival of Randy Johnson. Johnson has worked as something of a mentor with Billy Wagner. They're the two hardest throwing left handers in Major League Baseball both of them are here in Houston hardly seems fair. Yeah. And now Billy Wagner is benefiting from some of Randy Johnson's slider know-how. Here's David Nilsson now. Nilsson's hitless tonight, nothing for three. But closer book on Jose Lima. Eight very strong innings tonight. Allows two runs earned on only five hits. He walked two, struck out six. And if Wagner can hold things up, Jose Lima stands to win his 11th game of the year. Jose Lima did a heck of a job in the top of the eighth inning. First two base runners aboard for the Brewers. Two on nobody out, and he got three in a row. This is Billy Wagner's third appearance since coming back off the disabled list. You recall about a month plus ago. Hitting the head with a line drive off the bat of a former Brewer, Kelly Stinnett, down in Arizona. It's ball four to Nilsson. A very scary situation for Billy Wagner. A lot of that this year in the big league. Mike Lucina got hit in the face. You got to figure when that pitcher lets go of that baseball, he's about 52 feet away. Big and strong as these hitters are, it's surprising there's not more of that. One out base runner for Valentin now. A chance to talk to Wagner about that before the game today. And he said, if you can believe it, it was quick and painless. He never saw it, never felt it. The first thing he remembers was when he tried to stand up, when he got a little nauseous, tried to get to his feet and went right back down again. 
That's probably the best situation. You don't know what hit you on those. Never saw the ball coming at him. That's probably the most frightening thing about getting hit, watching the ball as it comes at you. Nothing and two on Valentin. Went on to say that that one moment is going to make him a much better major league pitcher because he's going to be in a better position to field from that point on for the rest of his career. Sean Berry. Yikes. Well, when you talk about Sean Berry, you don't really talk about defense. Talk about his power and hitting. Oh, a hanging slider. Look at that. Full extension. Took a base hit away from Valentin. It's amazing this ball club. They beat you in a lot of ways, and one of the ways you never talk about is defense. Well, only Marquise Grissom stands between the Astros and a four game series sweep of the Brewers. One and oh to Marquise. Biggio handles a ground ball. It was 33 years ago today that the Beatles released their single Help. Very appropriate as the Brewers are handed their fourth straight loss here in Houston. Certainly could have used some help against the Astros. Houston wins at 6-2. Bill and I return to wrap it up right after this.